In this video, we're going to test ChatGPT solving some coding tasks. So, for example, we can ask ChatGPT to do things like send an email using Python or any other program language. You only have to go here to this box and write whatever you want. So, in this case, just to start with something very simple, I'm going to say plot a linear regression. And here you can be very specific and say the programming language you want to use. I'm going to say with Python. And you can be more specific by writing the library. If you don't write the library, uh, ChatGPT is going to choose any library, but I'm going to specify this one. So I'm going to say using matplotlib. So I'm going to press enter. And now ChatGPT is going to read this and it's going to interpret what I'm uh, requesting. So it's going to plot a linear regression using Python and the library matplotlib. And now it takes a couple of seconds and finally it understood. So it says to plot a linear regression with Python, you can use a scatter or you can use uh, this, uh, this module. And well, now it's doing all of this. It's writing the code and it's even uh, writing some comments. So first it's generating some fake data and then it's feeding this uh, a linear regression to the data. I'm not doing anything. And at the end of this, uh, when ChatGPT finishes doing this, I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste this on Jupyter Notebook to test if everything is correct. So now we have uh, some, some suggestions by Chat. GPT, this will generate a scatter plot, but it's giving an alternative. So here we can have another way to do this, but I don't, I don't care about that. I'm going to copy this because I believe with this is enough. So I'm going to copy and as you can see, it gives you not only the code, but some nice comments here, comments and here explanation about what it's doing. So it's not only about the, the code, but it also gives you some explanation. So now I copied this, I'm going to paste it and I'm going to check if this is correct. So here it says that uh, I don't have uh, the module SciPy, so I'm going to install it here. Okay, I've just installed SciPy and now let's see if it does the job. And now as we can see, this gave an error. So fortunately, ChatGPT gave us an alternative. So here it says, alternatively, you can use this other option. So I'm going to copy this. And actually, when I tested this before, this was the only alternative. So I'm going to copy and paste this one. And as you can see, now we got this, uh, this linear regression. And well, we generated this using ChatGPT. So fortunately, we have here two options. All right, now let's continue testing this. And now let's try something else. So let's try sending a message on WhatsApp using Python. And to do this, we need a third party library named PyWatKit. So I'm going to say something like this, send a message on WhatsApp using Python and PyWatKit. So let's see if this AI recognizes this PyWatKit. It's not so popular, this library. So let's test this out. So I'm saying send a message on WhatsApp using Python and PyWatKit. You can add more detail like uh, adding the your phone number, but obviously in this video, I'm not going to show my phone number. So you can test it out on your own. And now we see that ChatGPT is writing the code to send a message using PyWatKit. So we see all the code. This will schedule the message to be sent at the specified time. So we have to specify here the hour and the minute. We have 12.30 by default, but we can change it. Uh, know that you need to install PyWatKit, of course, this is the module, and have a working internet connection. You also need to have the latest version of Chrome, yeah, uh, installed on your computer. And I know all of this because I have a tutorial on how to send a message on WhatsApp using Python and using this library. So I know that this is correct. So you can copy this, actually, and you can paste it on uh, PyCharm, for example. Here you can write your number or the number of anybody. You have to install this library, write here the message you want, and that's it. You can send the message on WhatsApp. I'm gonna show you here uh, 
the example I did in the previous tutorial where I wrote the code on my own, but of course here it's with this uh, AI chat GPT. Okay, now let's go back here and let's continue testing. Before here, I wrote send a message on WhatsApp using Python and PyWatKit. But what if now we want to be more specific? Let's try sending an email and now I'm gonna specify the email that is gonna be the sender and the email that is gonna be the receiver. Also the subject for the email and the content that the email has so that's a lot of details let's see if chat gpt can handle this so here i'm going to paste this command that i had before and this is going to help us see if chat gpt can handle so many details so here it says send an email from email one for example here i'm going to write my my own email this is the email that i'm going to use and then for the receiver, I'm gonna write another email that I have that actually I don't use so often, but I'm gonna use for this test. Here I have send an email from my first email that I'm using for this example to my second email with the subject email sent by chat GPT and the content chat GPT rocks using Python. So let's press enter and let's test this out. So this is a very, uh, I'm not gonna say complex, but I will say it's challenging to understand all of this and to execute that without any mistake. So let's see if this AI can handle all of this. So first it's trying to understand all of the, the request with this uh, explanation. So it says to send an email with a subject, we have to use uh, SMTP lib. And yeah, that's the library uh, that we use to send emails with Python. So now it's writing the code, it's writing comments, the sender, the repeat, the recipient, sorry. Then it's uh, connecting to SMTP server. Yeah, we need to do something like that. It's telling us uh, some details and it's adding a note. So note that you need to have a working internet, of course, and a valid email account. Uh, you also need to allow, yeah, this is the note. So you also need to allow less secure apps to access your email account. But it doesn't say anything about the 16 character password. So in the past, you could send emails just uh, allowing less secure apps. But nowadays or recently, you have to add to a step verification and also create a 16 character password. So uh, ChatGPT doesn't know about that, but I know about that because I have a tutorial on that, but ignoring that, let's see if that works. So here I have the code. And so far I have to say that this looks good. We have the sender, we have the recipient, the subject and the content. So it seems everything is perfect. Just one thing that we have to keep in mind is the password. So here for the sake of this video, I'm gonna hide my password in this email underscore password variable. I'm gonna uh, delete my password that was in quotes and I'm gonna write this variable. So now, Let's test this out. I'm gonna run this and see what happens. So we have process finish with exit code zero. So apparently everything was successful. And now I'm gonna check my email. Okay, I log into my email and as you can see here, I have a new email that says email sent by chat GPT. And the content is chat GPT rocks. And well, as you can see, I also did a test uh, like three hours before this one. And we can see that everything worked successfully and we didn't have to write all of this code, but ChatGPT did it for us. And this is just awesome. So now let's do something more challenging. Now let's try to scrape a website with ChatGPT. So I'm gonna give a, a task to ChatGPT, something like this. So web scrape, and then I'm gonna write the link of a website. So I'm gonna use this website here books to scrape.com and then I'm gonna say using Python force and here we can specify the library or you can leave it as is. In this case I'm gonna say and beautiful soup. So beautiful soup is a Python library that allows us to scrape websites. I'm gonna scrape this website and before I press enter let's have a look to this website. So this is the website books to scrape.com and we're gonna scrape maybe the title or the prices. I'm not gonna specify what data I want from this website, but I'm gonna let ChatGPT figure this out on its own. So I'm gonna press enter and let's see what this AI does. So sometimes it takes more than a couple of seconds, but you have to be patient because some tasks are very challenging.
So this is very good. Uh, I think it successfully extracted the price. We can see here that we have the price and also the title. So it's printing the title and also the price. So here it didn't export the data. I know that because it's not exporting a txt file or a csv file, but only printing. But in the previous test I did, it exported a file with all the data. In this case, I'm going to leave it as is. So I'm going back here to PyCharm, copy and paste it. And let's see if this works smoothly. So here I run this and here we have the price, sorry, the title first and then the price. So let's verify if this is correct. So here we have a light in the attic, 51.77. I think this is, this is the symbol of pounds. And yeah, we have this. And then tipping the velvet, 53.74. And yeah, so we successfully scrape all of this data using uh, actually chat GPT. I mean, we can say we used beautiful soup, but we didn't write the code. Chat GPT did all on its own. And this is awesome.